Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Drugs Milan Unboxing. This weekend, Saturday in Manchester in the UK, we've got a South African flavor. You'll see uh, behind me two of South Africa's greatest fighters, Brian Mitchell and Muyani Bungu. Hopefully, I've done it better than the PR disaster of the zone they spread on social media. But be it as it may, it's a fight that we South Africans have a lot of interest in. And I'm talking about uh, Connor Ben, the son, of course, of a dark destroyer, Nigel Ben, taking on South Africa's Chris van Heerden over 12 rounds. Now, this is a welterweight encounter, and uh, it is a big break for Chris van Heerden. He is one of those South Africans that packed his bags, went overseas, Took a lot of guts to go and do it. I think we've had through history South Africans who have done it. We can go way back to Jake Tooley, who campaigned extensively as a flyweight in the UK. Was the number one contender for fighting Arara for years. Never got a title shot. Uh, there's been quite a few recently. We had DJ Creel making a move to America. I think he only had a total of two fights, but it ended up in him winning a world title. And uh, of course, we had the white buffalo, Francois Boerta, who relocated and campaigned extensively as a heavyweight in the States and fought the whole who's who of, it, of heavyweights. Uh, now, Chris van Heerden is taking on Connor Ben, Kenny Spring, the upset. Now, Ben is 25 years old, Chris is 32 years old, Ben is undefeated, 20 wins, 13 knockouts, and Chris has tasted defeat before. He's got a record of 28 wins, uh, two losses one draw and one, his last fight was declared a no contest. Now, if we look at Chris Van Heerden, he's a southpaw. Uh, he's an extremely fit fighter. All fighters are fit, but Chris takes it to the next level. He's very fit and he's busy. He's got a high work rate. He's a grinder, hence the nickname, the heat. Uh, whether he can bring the heat to Conor Ben remains to be seen. Now, he's got uh, 13 knockouts, I think, in those 28 wins. So a big drawback with Chris Van Heerden is he's not a big puncher. Right, he's not going. Uh, ben can be hit and he can be hurt, like we saw early in his career. I think he's closed a lot of holes, but uh, Chris doesn't have, in my opinion, the punch to really uh, trouble Conor Ben. I don't think he's going to be able to hurt him. But what he does have, he's got that southpaw style. He's the first southpaw that Conor Ben is fighting. Uh, he's busy and he's got good feet. He can move well. And uh, in when he moved to the States, he, he most, for the most part, he kept winning. Um, he, he, he beat sometimes undefeated fighters. He beat guys with good records. His uh, last win was uh, was against a uh, Russian Aslanbek Kozaev, who had a who had a record of uh, I think 33 wins, two losses. Had, so got solid guys have solid records, but not top 10, top 15 kind of guys. Uh, the welterweight division, as we know, is one of the most talented divisions in, in, in all of boxing. So it's a very tough weight division to, to be in. But when Chris fights those guys, uh, he doesn't dominate. Okay, you can't expect guys to knock uh, people out. And it's a dangerous uh, comparison sometimes that uh, uh, somebody uh, wins on points and another guy knocks that guy out. It doesn't mean that that, that, that guy who scored a knockout is going to win. But uh, he's, not, he's not boxing rings around him or scoring shutout decisions. Uh, those guys are competitive. Uh, Chris wins, but he wins close. He wins competitive fights. Um, against that same sort of guys, uh, Conor Ben destroys him. Now, if you look at Conor Ben in, in uh, 2021, he's had a very good year. He stopped a very durable, uh, usually very durable Jesse Vargas in, in the first round. Then he had to go the distance against Adrian Granados, didn't look so good. And then in his last fight, he knocked out in four rounds Chris uh, Algeri, who was an ex-world champ. Now, Algeri, we can say he, he's not in his prime anymore, but I still think he's far from shot. He still has, has quite a bit left. And uh, Algeri is a guy that you can compare a little bit to Chris Van Yellen in the sense that he's not a big puncher and he does move well. And that didn't work for Algeri. He, he got his clock clean there. Now, uh, Van Yerden is the kind of guy that can frustrate Conor Ben. When the fight was first announced, I think is, I thought that this is a style for Van Yerden that might suit him. Uh, because what gives Conor Ben trouble is when a guy moves, frustrates him, breaks his rhythm like Adrian Granados did. But Granados was only there to, to survive. He didn't really fight to win. And uh, knowing Chris Van Yerden, he's going to give it a go. He's going to really try and win this thing. Now, what worries me about uh, Chris Van Heerden, he's been an actor for more than a year, he sat 2021 out, 
but what worries me is his last fight. Although it ended in a, in a, in a no decision uh, because of a clash of heads and he, he uh, uh, had a huge gash over Chris's uh, eye and that to stop the fighters. And, uh, and it was a, towards the end of the first round. So it was declared a no contest or a no decision before Geron Ennis, who along with Virgil Ortiz is considered one of the young bucks of the division. And in that fight, right, it was a slightly less than a round, but uh, as good as Ennis looked, Chris looked terrible in that fight. He took almost every punch that Ennis threw and he looked to be on his way to an early stoppage. Uh, he was getting beaten up in that short while that the fight lasted and that is worrying to me. I don't know if uh, something wrong before the fight. Uh, Ennis is good. You can't really compare uh, Jerron Ennis to Conor Ben. That would be sort of... If Conor Ben is his old man, Nigel Ben, Jerron Ennis would be uh, Roy Jones, a very athletic and orthodox shifty kind of fighter. Um, so it's not the sell, same style comparison, but I do think Chris did really not look good against Jerron Ennis. And maybe it was a bit of luck that the fight ended the way it, it did because he was really eating punches from Ennis. Now, uh, Conor Ben, what I like about Conor Ben is he does seem to improve. In one of his earlier fights, he got knocked down tw twice and then he fought the guy later and he won a decision. And uh, he, he's, he's becoming a good offensive technician. Sometimes when he, he, he loses his head, Van Jürgen says he's an angry fighter, I see a bit of that too. He loses his head and he starts winging power punches to get the guy out of there. You could see against Granados he got frustrated. But he has developed a, a very good power jab and he used a good effect against Chris Algieri. He's, he's, he's learned the finer uh, bits of a craft, you know, he's learned how to feint, he, he's, he's, got a, he's got his defense a little bit better, his technique is a little bit better. There's been steady improvement. So for Chris Van Heerden, he's got to take a leaf out of a book of Adrian Granados. He needs to frustrate uh, uh, Conor Ben and get him off his game plan. And that would mean uh, we have to hope that the Southpaw style confuses Conor Ben. He's got to be very busy with his jab and he's got to be on his feet all the time. If Chris stands and tries off Conor Ben, I think he's going to go home uh, early. So he needs to uh, use his fitness, use his conditioning. He's going to have to fight beside himself to, to, to be successful here against Conor Ben. And uh, he's got to frustrate Conor Ben, get him into the late round, set a pace that Ben is, is, is not comfortable with. And, and make him get tired and outwork him over the course of 12 rounds. Now, uh, can he do that? Uh, I am not so. I am not so. I am not so sure. You know, the thing that worries me the most about Chris Van Yellen is how he looked in his last fight. And uh, I think he's he's only 32. Ben is 25, but I think he's had a, he has a lot of mileage on the clock. I respect the heck out of Chris Van Yellen for doing what he did. Uh, with his career he's made a, a success of it in america he's got a big fights and hopefully good purses he couldn't get over the hump against guys like errol spence jr uh spence stopped him in eight rounds and uh that showed you the gap you know chris yerden is more a fringe contender kind of guy that's just outside of a top 10 if you look at the independent ratings away from the sanctioning bodies kind of being at the moment ranked number 10 by ring magazine so I think it's just a question of levels. Uh, Conor Ben is a guy who's going to be a contender, whether he can be a champion in the welterweight division, uh, seeing how it's going. You know, guys like Errol Spence fighting Ugas this weekend and Terence Crawford, I'm not so sure he can, can do that, but he is, he's definitely good enough to be a legit contender at welterweight. I don't know if Chris at this stage uh, has enough left in the tank. So... I hope I am wrong because I'm obviously rooting for uh, my fellow South African, but I, I can't see it ending well for Chris Van Heerden uh, in Manchester on, on Saturday. I hope I'm wrong. Hopefully there will be South Africans to support him. Uh, if you're going to keep the fight close and uh, let's say he can out out outbox Conor Ben in spots, the, under, the, the, the underwritten but sadly very well known uh, rule about boxing is you don't get a close decision against a rising star in his hometown. So he's not going to pull off a, a, a fight when it is one or two point uh, close fight. He's going to have to comprehensively outbox him and I can't see that happening. And I think in that short uh, spate with Jeron Ennis, he took a lot of punishment. The other thing that I don't like ab about Chris Van Yellen in his last three fights, uh, the fight before Kozai, the Kozai fight, as well as the Ennis fight, in all those fights he's, he's been cut and he's been bleeding. 
and Ben is definitely going to put hands on him. So I think that's also going to come into effect. So if I have to put my head on the block, I think Chris Van Heeren will be brave. He'll give it his best shot. Uh, everyone knows that. That's the type of fighter he is. But I think Conor Ben is just going to have too much for him. And I think Conor Ben is going to stop him within five or six rounds. Uh, either by the referee intervening or, uh, once again, uh, Chris cutting up. I think probably the former. But uh, that's what I think. I think Conor Ben is gonna, uh, going to win... Uh, uh, exciting as long as it last fight, but I think he's going to win and he's going to win by stoppage. I hope Chris can pull off the upset. If you like this title, uh, if you like this channel, please give it a thumbs up and please give it a subscribe. And until we see each other again, please keep those hands up.